What's up, boxing fan? This is Anna Hill with another boxing analysis. This is a um, post fight analysis between uh, Richard Abreu from Cuba, boxing out of uh, Miami, Florida. And uh, you have uh, Sharif Bovar, the lion, uh, from Uganda. And uh, Richard Abreu calls himself El Tiger. So he's the tiger versus the lion. Um, you know, the, the fight was really, really, like, not boring, but. <clears throat> you can see a little bit of boxing out of the fight, you know, and it mostly came from Richard Abreu. And this is boxing. This is not the fighting championships of the world. This is boxing championships of the world. Two things that people need to understand and know that they don't go hand in hand. It's, it's boxing, people. And uh, Richard Abreu outboxed his opponent tonight. Um, I mean, they said that Sharif landed more jabs. I really didn't see that throughout the fight. Saw a little wrestling and throwing down, you know, your opponent and trying to use rough tactics, hitting in the back of the head a couple of times. He kept leading with his head, his forehead over and over and over. Sometimes not even looking to do inside work, which I thought he would be effective in this fight if he did some inside work and threw some body punches, left and right hooks to the body and follow up with a leading left uppercut while you're in the inside. But he was so worried about Richard Abril. I guess quote unquote holding him, which Richard Abreu is smart. I've been in the ring, I box myself. If somebody is running head first to you with full head of steam, that can potentially fuck up your eye or you can ruin your career and get some crazy rippage in your face, yo. Like people's head the head is dangerous, you know, it's just as lethal as a punch. So when somebody is leading with the head but it's smart to push the head down. I mean that's what I do too, that's not a bad thing to do. And the referee Russell Moore was fucking just, he's trash. I do not like him. I wish Tony Weeks or somebody like uh, Steve Smoger or uh, just, 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 just somebody else, you know. Uh, even Jay Nady would have been better. I mean, just somebody else of, of, of class and substance because Russell Moore is just not a good ref. He, he was trying to dictate the fight himself. Taking a point away from Sharif in the twelfth round for headbutts or whatever, it was too late. Should have took it away way before then. Um, just, it's just ridiculous. And uh, they gave Sharif, uh, I mean, uh, Richard Abril took a point away because they said he was holding when he was punching, but he had his left arm kind of cocked like this, and he had his, you know, forearm kind of out. It, it's just ridiculous. But anyway, the fight went like this. Um, you know. Sharif, being a shorter guy, five foot five, running in with his head, uh, he jabbed a little bit in spots in the beginning rounds. He had some success in the middle round with an overhand right, which you can land on any any uh, boxer that gives you half of the body to punch at. That's what Brandon Rios landed on. Uh, Mike Alvarado with that same lead overhand right, you know, and that's when you put your left foot in front of that person's uh, left foot if they're orthodox and you throw your overhand right with conviction and you come over at an angle and you come over like that. When, when you do such, you can land either on the side of the chin or on the front of the chin or sometimes even in the nose area and it, you know, automatically shuts off your nerves, you know, uh, but Richard Abreu showed he has a really good beard, really good chin. Um, he got hit with a couple, but Richard Abreu don't get hit that much, guys. You saw his fight after the majority of his fight. He doesn't have any bruises. He might have cuts because somebody had buddy, but nothing from a, a solid blow, a solid punch. And uh, Richard Abril uh, has a title now because remember Brandon Rios did not make weight or whatever for that fight uh, when they had it. And uh, they decided to give the title to Richard Abril. He defended it tonight successfully. Um, you know, I mean, I, I really thought he did his thing tonight. Uh, he had great great uh, straight right hand leads and it, it was just really nice to see him throw straight um, right hand leads and he turned out he does something that most boxers don't do and that probably comes from his Cuban background um, he switches his uh, back leg you know his right leg at an angle almost at a 90 degree angle every time his opponent tries to come forward that gets them off balance for a second and you can work combinations at one point uh, Richard Abreu threw a straight right hand like a jabbing almost left hook type of punch in another straight right hand it was really beautiful. Uh, just really, really good combinations. Uh, Richard Brill landed really good left hooks throughout the fight. 
And um, I, what I what can I say? It was a tough, grimy, gritty, you know, twelve rounds of boxing. Uh, like I said, Richard Brill had the longer reach in the fight. Obviously, if you're five foot ten inches tall to a five foot five inches tall guy, you're gonna pretty much beat him at 135, throwing straight right hand leads with pinpoint accuracy. Um, I, I think if I had to criticize Richard Brill more, it would be more jabbing. He needs to double his jab at times, step to the side, do do some body work. You know, throw throw some good angles, left uppercuts to the body. Uh, I call it the stab. You need to stab with the jab more to the solar plexus area, where the, you know more like where the belly button is at. That really, really, really stops your opponent freezing them for a second, and you can uh, work the combinations. Uh, but otherwise, he did a very good job. Um, he protected himself at all times, like you're supposed to. A lot of people don't grasp that concept, grasp the concept of that, and it's a part of ring generalship in boxing. And he just made it easy. I mean, he was having fun and he was smiling. I mean, he was not uncomfortable the whole fight. He's one of my favorite boxers right now. Like I said, one of the most underrated boxers is Bridge or uh, Uh You know, El Tiger is here. Uh, Broner was there at ringside scouting. He was talking some shit. Richard Brill smiled at him. I think it was in the second or third, maybe the fourth round. Go back and look at the fight. He was like, you know, trying to yell at him, taunt at him a little bit. Um, I would love to see that fight. Like that, that is that 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 is the super fight. That's the fight that I really, really, honestly want to see is um, those two go at it. You know, um, I just really feel uh, Richard Brill's link. Um, his own style of the, you know, you know that I, I call it the Mayweather style. It's basically the Mayweather style, shoulder roll style in in his own way, though. You know, because he's long and he takes his time and he breaks you down, throwing straight right hand leads and jabbing and throwing one two two, you know, one two one two threes. And I really think that he'll give a lot of trouble to Rona because of his footwork and his timing, and he's really really smart in the ring. Uh, Broner would have his hands full, he had to come forward, try to walk him down. And I, like I said, that's that's the fight I want to see. That's my super fight. If not, it's the guy that's been calling him out. I have to let everybody know he's from Texas. Um, he's fought with some of the best and he, he's he's looking to fight the best. His name is Omar Figueroa. This Mexican Guerrero, this Mexican warrior has so much potential to be one of the best. I think he's like 19 and 0 with 15 knockouts, undefeated. Broner give him a shot. He's five foot nine, five foot ten, rangy, southpaw, and he's a come get you type of guy. Like he's an aggressive, come forward, but smart, smart, um, uh, come forward fighter. He can't box too, so he's like a boxer puncher mixed into both styles. If he can do box, he can do both, and he has a lot of strings of first round knockouts. So that'd be a very good fight to see. Uh, I saw Jorge Linares in the crowd. Another, another great fight if it ever can be made. I would love to see the speed, speedy punches of Jorge Linares versus uh, Adrian Broner. Like, so Adrian Broner, don't like, you wanna, you know, my favorite when it comes to style in the ring. Your style is brilliant. I would love to see you fight top opposition. Don't say that just Ricky Burns. Ricky Burns can't do shit with the Jorge Linares. Uh, Miguel Vasquez and Miguel Vasquez will win that fight. Mark my word. He's too rangy, too smart, great boxer, barely gets hit, and nobody's figuring him out yet. Very, very, very slick style. Um, you know, I think the only person that did was Thou El Canelo Alvarez or some shit like that, and that was a long time ago. But anyway, um, there's a lot of people at 135, Broner, so don't just say it's just Richie Burns and I'm trying to hop out the division, go to 140. At first, I wanted you to go to 142. But I thought about it. I'm like, hmm, let me really look into it. There's many boxers top level. And why not take undefeated guys' records? I mean, if you're really that good, why not face an Omar Figueroa? Yes, everybody don't know him, but the guy's only 19 or 20 years old. Like, give him time, you know what I'm saying? He's still young, you know, but he wants to fight the best, so give him a shot. Um, like I said, there's so many boxers out there. There's, there's Vasquez at 135. He has, I think, the IBF or one of the titles. And um, even Gary Russell Jr., for some reason, that he wants to go to 135 if Bone is still there in face, which I know he'll be long gone by the time, so I mean, it is what it is. But anyway, great, great night of boxing tonight. Gary Russell Jr., of course, he did his thing. There's not much to say. Outboxed the guy, made him look silly. Only that guy only landed one jab out of 10 rounds. It's ridiculous. Gary Russell Jr., 
has great combinations. He doesn't run, stands right in front of you, but he uses angles and he uses good boxing footwork and he keeps it in a square circle. Like he doesn't go to the outside. He stays in the middle and just lets all combinations step to the side. Great, great style. Love watching him box. Can't wait to see him in there with the top upper echelon of uh, 126 pounds at Featherweight. So, um, yeah. so tell me who you think should face Gary Russell Jr. next. Uh, how do you think he looked tonight, even though his left hand, you could tell there was something wrong with it. He probably sprained it real bad or something like that. And what did you think of Richard Everett? I've been getting a lot of mixed signals, a lot of mixed comments from people. Honestly, tell me your honest opinion of what you think. If you think he's a runner, tell me that. If you think he's okay, then you tell me that too. Like, if you think he's a beast and you think he can do big things in the sport box, let me know. I just really think he can. Um, of course, you'll have to learn, you know, uh, to pretty much do more of a pro style and, and I'm saying like double jab more like and then set up your combinations like don't always straight right hand lead all the time and then step to the side like work more combination from the body to the head to the head to the body and I think more fans will grow to like you know real boxing fans that is not just high beast that hop on bandwagon but um like I said let me know what you think and Richard Brill defends his title successfully at uh, 135 pounds of WBA lightweight title and uh, how do you think he would fare up against Adrian Broner like I said once before uh, he's you know like I said 30 years old the time is ticking 18 wins now a by uh, knockout and uh, three losses one draw and yeah peace